In this video, we're going to talk about the research report, the actual document you're going to produce at the end of the course. Um, and uh, the model that I'm going to uh, present to you and that you're going to follow is really based on, on a formal five-chapter research report that, like you might see uh, in a dissertation or a thesis or some other piece of formal research. Um, and this is the model that we're going to use in this course. Now, regardless, when you look at research, whether you're reading a research um, article in a journal or in uh, some other venue, um, you ought to be able to find all the elements that we're going to talk about uh, um, in, in this video in that uh, uh, research article, regardless of whether it's a formal piece of research, uh, like a, um, a dissertation or research, or whether it's uh, something in a research, uh, research journal uh, or something more informal, let's say, um, in, in a magazine or a newsletter. Uh, so these components of the research report are critical to understand and, and I think help provide some guidance for understanding what's involved in doing research. So let's start with the first section or the first chapter, uh, which is really the purpose and the rationale for the study. Usually where you start, with, um, start this chapter is with the rationale. So you're going to lay out some ideas about why this study is important. Why should this study be conducted? What, what are these issues and why are these issues um, worthwhile to investigate? That's critical to lay that groundwork because later that will help you understand um, how to talk about the discussion of the findings when you get to the last chapter. The next section of chapter one is the problem statement and the research questions and the hypotheses if they're applicable. Uh, and this certainly is the heart of the whole research study uh, as it lays out the guideposts for what you're going to do and, and what kinds of data you're going to collect. Um, this often is followed by the definition of terms, which are specific terms that, you're going to, that you might be using in your research uh, that um, uh, the general public might not understand, or terms that you're going to be using that are um, used, be used in a different way from what um, they are typically used. Uh, and the last section of the first study, first chapter, I mean, is what we call the limitations section. Um, I also like to refer to this as the truth and advertising section because essentially what you're going to do is you're going to tell the reader of your research uh, in what ways this research uh, uh, could have been better or was not as optimal as you would have liked it to have been. Now there's other places in the research where you're going to talk about what went wrong with your research study in the methodology or third chapter. But in this section right up front in the first chapter, what we're going to talk about is the design limica uh, limitations, things that you designed into the study that weren't uh, uh, maybe uh, the way you really would have liked, to have liked for them to have been. For example, you may have uh, designed the study to have a small sample size, uh, or to collect data from people from only one locale or one institution, uh, or you may have limited the issues, uh, and uh, in, in each of these cases, you might have liked to have a larger sample, more institutions uh, involved, or, or um, a broader array of issues that were, would have been investigated. These are all examples of design or conceptual limitations of your study. Now the second chapter is the literature review, and this provides the background information about what's already known about this topic. There's another video that deals with literature reviews in more detail, so we won't go into um, uh, any detail here, other than to say that the, uh, a good literature review is imperative uh, for uh, developing a good research study because this provides the intellectual, the conceptual basis for your study uh, in terms of what you're going to do with um, uh, how you're going to interpret your findings and how you're going to make sense out of what you learn from the study. Now the third chapter is the methodology chapter. This is where you're going to identify how you're going to conduct the study. And there are several components to this, several pieces to this chapter. The first is what we call the setting. 
And the setting is essentially like background information. So you're going to talk about where the study was conducted or the general um, uh, information that would make the reader well informed about the study. Let me give you an example. So if your study is about graduate students at IUP, you might want to say something about IUP as an institution, um, some information about uh, what it's like, who goes there, what kind of students, what kind of majors, um, and maybe some descriptive information about the students in general so that uh, the reader would, under, would be able to put the findings of the study into that context and understand better about what this, what, how to interpret those findings and ultimately how to apply those findings to their situations that they're working in um, where they might want to be able to use your research to inform them about their practice um, and decisions they need to make. The second part of the methodology chapter really deals with the sample. Uh, and there's two issues here with the sample. One is, well, who is the sample and how were they selected? So how did you go about getting this group of people? Uh, was it a, um, a, a random sample? Were they purposefully selected because they had certain characteristics? How did you get access to them? Uh, or was it a convenient sample? Any number of, of strategies might be employed here. And the second issue related to the sample are the ethical considerations. Uh, what did you do to safeguard things like confidentiality, anonymity, uh, protection of data, uh, and so on? So those are the issues that, that, that you might want to address in the sample section. The next two sections deal with your data, how to collect the data, and then how to analyze the data. In the data collection section, you're really going to describe how you actually go about collecting the data. Did you administer a survey? Did you make up that survey? Did you purchase the survey? Was the survey from another source? Do you have permission to use it? Um, all of these things are going to be, uh, have to be talked about. If you're going to do interviews, how did you make up the questions for your interviews? Um, or how did you actually go about conducting the interviews? If you're going to use field notes, what did you do to collect those notes? Where did you collect those notes? How did you access people to collect those notes? And so on. There's, uh, and what form did the notes take? And so on. There's, there's a lot of issues not necessarily to be um, identified and discussed in terms of, of data collection, really depending upon your data collection method. Data analysis is the same thing. In some instances, your data analysis will be uh, very um, uh, straightforward. Uh, if you're doing a statistical analysis, you might mention the, uh, the software program that you use and the various statistical procedures that you employed. If it's a qualitative data analysis, it might um, involve a little bit longer uh, definition or explanation of uh, how you went about doing the, um, the data analysis process. The last section of the methodology chapter uh, is comments on procedures, and here you're going to talk about anything that went wrong or didn't go like you expected that it would that might have um, an impact on interpreting the findings. So if you send out a million questionnaires and you only get six back, that's certainly something that you want to talk about. Uh, if you went to conduct interviews but people were uh, suspicious or unable to um, uh, uh, respond openly or honestly, that's certainly something that's going to affect the data that you collected during those interviews. So anything that happened during the course of conducting the study that impacts your findings is what you want to talk about in this comments section. Now let's sort of look at these first three chapters. The first one is the rationale and the problem statement. In other words, uh, what is this study all about and why are you doing it is the first chapter. The second chapter is the lit review. That's what do we already know about this chapter or about this topic. And the third chapter is your methodology or your plan for conducting the research. When you take these three chapters in aggregate, they really perform, uh, really form what we call the proposal. Uh, and in formal research, like a thesis or dissertation, you would have to ha present those three chapters in their entirety to a committee. Uh, to be reviewed prior to going out and conducting the research so that they would know that you knew what you were doing, how you were going to do it, and that you had a sound plan for, for collecting and analyzing the data. Uh, for the purposes of this course, you don't need to do that, uh, but we will need to talk through what you're going to do 
uh, and I will need to um, uh, approve uh, your um, uh, uh, IRB protocol, uh, which is your, the your document you're going to write to show that you have, um, have considered the ethical uh, issues related to collecting data. Um, now let's turn our attention to the fourth chapter, which is where you're going to present the findings of your research. I refer to this chapter as the dragnet chapter because it's just the facts, ma'am. Uh, your opinion, your uh, ideas, your reflection on what these data mean is not really what we want in this chapter. What we want is for you to um, just tell us what the findings were. So if you did a questionnaire, you're going to report the numbers, uh, so the average response of the, of the males, the average response of the females, uh, or if you're going to uh, look at different groups, uh, you're going to look at the responses of those different groups. Um, on your questionnaire, if you're reporting interviews, you're going to look at what different people said uh, about uh, their reactions to the topics that were being discussed. Again, you're, not, you're going to leave out evaluative comments, but you're only going to include comments related to reporting actually what you learned. This brings us to the last chapter, which is the discussion of the findings. And this is really where you bring the whole thing to a culmination. Um, and here what you are going to do is you are going to um, uh, present some evaluation of what's the value of these findings. So you presented the findings in, in chapter four, now you're going to talk about, well, what is this good for? What can we do with this stuff? So it's, I refer to this uh, sometimes as the now what, so what chapter. We have this stuff, so now what does it mean? Well, there's really a lot of different ways you can go about um, doing this, but here's two strategies you might employ. The first is what I call um, uh, the Ann Landers approach, which is really giving advice to people. Based on what you learned from doing this study, what advice would you give to the target population who might read this study? So if your study is about uh, graduate students taking research courses and you find out that there are distinct differences amongst various kinds of graduate students in terms of their attitude and performance, one of your audiences that might make use of this are faculty who teach graduate courses. So what could you tell those faculty about these different groups of people in terms of their attitude and performance that you learn from your study that would help those faculty better structure and teach their courses so that the courses were more effective? So now you want to think about uh, that approach uh, as being a way of going on beyond just reporting your findings to actually presenting your findings in a way that will be useful to somebody. A second approach for doing this would be to talk about the issues in relationship to the literature review. So you go back to your chapter two, you look at the lit review, and you, inv and you talk about how your findings compare with those of findings of other research uh, and then you talk about how does this advance our understanding of the issues. What do we know now that we didn't know before? The very last section is the implications for future research in which you're going to talk about, well, what sort of research should we conduct next? Now you have some expertise and this is an important thing that you can help us understand. What direction should we go? What issues? What samples? What questions should we ask? So in this video, we talked about the general layout of a research report and the five basic elements or components or chapters that it typically is made up of. The problem statement and research questions and rationale form the first chapter, the literature review the second, the methodology the third, the findings the fourth, and a discussion and the implications for those findings in the last one.